The distribute 2D grid eye expression is nice to place a set of 2D layers in a randomly distributed grid. Yeah, I have here already a set of pictures and I renamed the first one to first and then I have all the others that are all placed now currently directly below it. Yeah, they have all the same position here. And so I select them all and just apply this eye expression to them with just the default settings. And now you can see they are placed here in some kind of grid. And here you can choose the distances. So we can, for example, say 250 from one point to the next one in uh, x direction. Yeah, so you can see if we move in here, currently they are overlapping Yeah, because the distance from here to here is too small. And let's say we also want from in this direction a bit more distance. So distance is always from one picture to the neighboring picture in x and y. So I select all of them, control A, and hit apply. And now you can say, see they are nicely placed here. Yeah? And it's always such that the first element is placed at uh, position 0, 0. And if you want to move them, the best thing to do is to create a new null. So layer, new null. And then parent all of these. I select all of them, and then just take this pick whip and parent it to it. And now you can see they jumped to the position of this null object. Yeah. And um, if I move the null object, hit P and move it here, you can see all the pictures are nicely following. Okay, now there are two things that look strange. And the first thing that looks strange is that it seems that the first picture here is missing. Yeah. And this is because it thinks the first picture is actually this null itself, yeah, because it's the first layer. If we move the null here on second position, you can see the null uh, here is the empty space for this null. Yeah. Um, and the way to change this is to tell the eye expression what is the first layer. Yeah. By default, it thinks the first layer is the layer number one. We can now say either it's number two. Yeah, we can set here a two and apply this. So I click Control A, oops, Control A to select all layers and deselect the null because we do not want to apply it to the null and hit apply. And now it works fine. Yeah, now the second layer is here. In case you fear that you change the index yeah, when you move them and it should stay the same, it's always safer to put here a layer name instead of a number. So we can here just say first, which is the name of this one and apply it. And now it's sure that uh, that that first will stay the, the first one. Yeah. Okay. The next thing that you have here is um, maybe you do not want to have your five in one row, but less of them. Yeah. So you can change your grid size to say four at this position. And again, I select all layers, all layers except the first one, and hit apply. And now you can see there are just four of them. And this number here gives actually the number of uh, of layers that are stacked on top of each other. Yeah, in this case, it's also just four. But if you want to have more, what you can do is simply add here more. Yes, let's say we take this layer and duplicate it. Control D. Then a new one is placed here below, and I duplicate it a second time. It's again uh, duplicated. So you want you might wonder why should I give here this grid size at all? And this has to do with the advanced layer offset. So if you have a layer offset, um, which um, basically makes elements jump from the first row below the last row, it must know where is the last row. Yeah, do we have four four rows or five rows, or or how many? Therefore, you must specify it here if you want to use this layer offset. Okay. Um, the position of the first layer can also be adjusted. Yeah, makes it just move. But I think um, using this null is always more convenient. So um, another thing I can show you is the wiggle. Yeah, the wiggle is the same as in all other distribute uh, eye expressions. You can just make the placement a little bit less regular. So let's say we want all of them to be shifted by let's say randomly 30 pixels. And again, I select all layers except the null and reapply it. And now you can see they are in the grid, but the grid looks a little bit less regular. Yeah? And um, this can, of course, be animated over time. So I can select here this null and click on this 
frequency and it asks me should I create a new slider for it. I say yes. And then I again select just the null, so no, no property of it, but just the null and click on the amplitude. And again it sh asks me should I create a new uh, slider for this. I say yes. And now I have here the two sliders, frequency and amplitude. And so if I keyframe now the amplitude, for example, to be 500 at the beginning, and after one second it should be zero. Yeah, and now I uh, need to apply this I expression again to all these layers. So control A and apply. And now you can see here they are ni perfectly nicely distributed, but at the beginning, uh, let's here look at the run through, they are completely messed up, yeah, to totally wiggled. And now since the wiggle amount gets smaller and smaller, <coughs> they jump into the position or they mo slowly move into the position where they should be. Yeah, so a very nice fading in and fading out effects that you can obtain by just animating here the amplitude. And if you want it also to wiggle in a uh, regular fashion, let's say we can say we do not want to go here really to zero, but to something like 20. And we want to wiggle very slowly with, let's say, 0 0.0,5 wiggles per second. Yeah, and you look at this. Um, let's just look here at the RAM preview. You can see now the elements move in. And once they moved in, uh, they will still continue wiggling a bit, namely 20 uh, pixels. Uh, with a speed of 0 0.5 wiggles per second. Yeah? So now they are not perfectly static, but they are all moving a little bit back and forth, which gives you a quite nice effect. Uh, okay, so there are two other things. One is use keyframe value as offset. Um, this makes the following. Uh, let's just enable this and um, apply it to all layers again. So all layers except this null are now selected and I reapply it. And now you will see that all of them immediately jump. Yeah, they jumped here to, to, to this position. And this is because their actual position, their keyframe position, if I click here, is currently minus 440, minus 160. If I set this back to zero, uh, zero, yeah, Oh, and I need to select all of these layers except this null and make this zero. Like this. Now you can say, see they are aligned as before, but the nice thing is you can keyframe them separately. So let's say we want to move this one here out of the grid at some point in time. Yeah. Let's say here at this point in time, where do we have this layer? This one. I just keyframe the position. Say here's the position now, and now I want to move it up. I just pick it and move it up like this. And all the grid remains intact, but this element uh, moves up now at this point in time. Yeah, this is when you use keyframe value of as offset. If you if you enable this, um, oh. Why actually did I link this to this slider? This was not my intention, actually. So <laughs> this actually always w also worked in this case because it meant whenever the frequency is not zero, this keyframe offset is uh, activated. But, but of course, this is by no means what we wanted to do. So we disable it here and just mark it here. Yeah, use keyframe value of offset is enabled by selecting this here. Sorry for this. Um, so apply it again. And now let's take a look at what we have. Okay, you can see everything animates quite nicely and then this single picture moves out. Yeah, And this is basically uh, yeah, the message here. If you want to animate single elements in your grid, enable this use keyframe value as offset thing and make sure that the original position of your layers is zero such that they are not shifted. And then by simply keyframing single layers, you can animate them 
on top of their grid position. Okay, the last powerful thing we have here is this layer offset, which you find in many of these uh, distribute I expressions. And here, if you look at it, it has actually two properties, yeah, an X property and a Y property. And let's just set this here to one, apply. You will see the first line here jumps right behind the last one. Yeah? And if you set it to two, this will also happen with the next line. So this line here jumps behind this one. And the nice thing is now you can link this again to some slider. And when you animate it then over time, yeah, you can scroll these elements here by animating your null and make the lines jump to the right such that you get the impression you have much more layers than you actually have. So let's see how this is looking like. So we go again here to this null object, keep just the null selected and click here on this link thing and it asks me should I create a controller for it. I say yes and now I have here this uh, offset of distribute 2D grid and it has two components yeah, like the original one. And if we apply it, so from everything from the first layer up to the last, I apply it. And maybe also let's get rid of these keyframes here of this single layer. Yeah, we do not need it anymore. Now you see everything is gone. Why is everything gone? This is because the offset here is set currently yeah, to 50-50, means it jumped 50 to the right and 50 layers to the bottom. So if we set this back to zero, zero, you can see it is back here. And if I now have here one, it jumps to the right. And if I set this one also to one, yeah, you can see the first row from here jumped below the last row. Yeah. And for this jumping from here to here, make sure that you have the right number of rows given at this position here. Yeah, if you give set here seven, then the first row would jump below the seventh row. So you would have some, some gap here in between. Anyway, so now we can, for example, animate the position P of this null object. Yeah, say at this point, it should be here and at the end, it should be at x minus 1000, for example, uh, here. And then we also keyframe this offset thing. So the offset in x direction should be at the beginning here, set a keyframe 0, 0, 0. And here at the end, Yeah, you can see without any offset, all elements are placed here completely off. Oh, I thought we had deleted here these keyframes, didn't we? Ah, okay, it's still at the wrong position, zero, like this, okay. Um, so they are all placed wrongly here, so we just adjust this. How many rows should it jump one, two, three, four, roughly five, maybe, maybe six. We'll see. So if we set it to five, everything jumps back here. Yeah. And if you now look at the RAM preview of this part, you will see that it nicely travels uh, here. Well, let's zoom a bit more in like this. You can see now the layers are traveling and the la rows that disappear here will jump to here once they have uh, disappeared. Yeah, or Once this index here has reached a value of one, it jumps to here. And of course, if you wanted to make in a way that the user does not notice that the elements from here are jumping to here, you need a bit more rows. Yeah, if you have, let's say not, uh, or more columns in this case. Here you have now four columns, so you see the one jumping from here to here. If you would do the same thing here with six columns or seven, that you have some disappearing here and some appearing here, the user would not notice that actually the things that appear here are disappearing here. In particular, when you use um, not still pictures as I do here, but use video clips. Yeah, you can do it with pre-coms that when something disappears here, something new appears here in your pre-com. So this is in general a very nice technique to make uh, people believe that you would have much more layers than you actually have because 
you always just reuse the same layers by taking the, um, them away from the beginning and placing them at the end.